If you're thinking about buying a dash cam, you have found the right video. Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to know about buying a dash cam, show you some sample video and testing from these 13 best-selling cameras, and help you find the right set of features to fit your needs and your budget. Let's start out with a quick crash course in dash cam features so that you know what's out there. When you're choosing a dash cam, you can go with the screen or no screen. For a number of cameras, you've got front facing only, front and rear, front and cabin, or front cabin and rear. You can choose GPS for tracking speed and location, or no GPS. Then you've got Wi-Fi, cellular, or no app connectivity. A lithium battery or a supercapacitor provides enough energy to finish recording when the car turns off or loses power. You can go with a suction cup mount or with double-sided tape. And for parking mode, the most common options are continuous low resolution recording, impact-based recording, and motion-based recording. First of all, if you're wondering whether you need a dash cam, then the answer is probably yes. But the more important question is why do you need a dash cam? Because that answer is gonna significantly change the style of camera that you should buy and ultimately the price point. There are four general reasons to have a dash cam. The most common is just having a record of what happened in your own car for security, insurance, or possibly legal purposes. For this most common use case, I would recommend a dash cam with front and rear cameras, a usable screen, and a supercapacitor for power. A popular saying is that 90% of at-fall crashes will be covered by the front dash cam and 9% will be covered by the rear. So with a front and rear system, you're theoretically 99% covered. For me personally, having a screen gives me the peace of mind to know exactly when and what is being recorded. And a supercapacitor for power means that your camera will tolerate extreme temperatures and will be less likely to fail than if it were using a lithium ion battery. My top recommendation in this category is easily the Viofo A129 Plus Duo, which is $169 and gets you a sharp 1440p front facing camera and a 1080p rear camera both with 140 degrees of field of view and excellent night performance. The A129 has a small but usable two inch screen, built-in GPS and supercapacitor for power. Other cameras that I tested in this category were the Nextbase 622GW, the Vantru X4S and the AZ Dome M01 Pro. And to me, the Viofo A129 Plus Duo just has the right mix of field of view, video clarity, low light performance and price. If you are in the market for a higher resolution camera, the Viofo does come in a 4K version, but you can expect the night performance to be slightly worse as the resolution increases. The $250 Vantru X4S also ticks all my boxes and has a 4K resolution front-facing camera with 131 degrees of field of view. Because of the higher resolution and lower field of view, details will be slightly more clear with the X4S than they are with the A129, but in my opinion, the A129's significantly better night performance more than outweighs the slightly better daytime performance of the X4S. And it's also worth noting that the Viofo A129 comes with GPS, while the Vantru X4S needs a separate $29 external GPS mount. Both cameras do support a number of different parking modes if your camera is hardwired or connected to a dash cam battery, but the Viofo has a few more options, including one that's really important to me, which limits the amount of time that your camera will stay in parking mode, so it will record when you're parked at a store, but it won't drain your battery when you're parked in the garage overnight. Obviously, if you wanted the parking mode to run constantly, then you can do that as well, but for me, I found that feature really useful. The other useful feature for the Viofo is a constant beep to alert you if your dash cam isn't recording. Because as I mentioned, you probably won't pay much attention to your dash cam until you need it. But when you need it, it needs to be working. And the Viofo's constant beeping is impossible to ignore. The second most common use for dash cams is for Uber, Lyft, or other rideshare drivers who may want to have a record of exactly what happened both inside and outside their car. In this case, features like GPS and a cabin camera become much more important, and a built-in screen becomes less desirable because it makes the camera more conspicuous. My top pick in this category is the $240 Viofo T130, which has front and rear cabin cameras, where the front and cabin camera are located on the same unit and are very easy to both mount and aim. The T130 records the front camera at 1440p and the rear and cabin cameras at 1080p. The front camera has the same 140 degrees of field of view as the A129 Plus Duo, while the cabin camera has a 165 degree fisheye lens that allows you to see the driver and the passenger seats while the camera is mounted on the windshield. The other popular screenless camera that I tested in this category is the $279 Garmin Tandem, which is significantly smaller than the T130 and has an impressive set of two 180 degree field of view cameras 
for the front and cabin view, and completely emits a rear camera. As I mentioned earlier, there is always a trade-off between field of view and video quality at the same resolution, and you can see that the Garmin really struggles to capture any detail at all. The Garmin Tandem does have a decent app experience, and people often choose it for its small size, but for the money, I think the Viofo T130 is significantly better in just about every way. The third use case for dash cams is to encourage safe driving habits for somebody other than yourself. This could be to monitor a teenager who just got their license or an employee using a company vehicle. In this case, features like GPS to track speed and location, an interior facing camera to monitor both the driver and the passengers, and app connectivity become increasingly important. Similar to security cameras, the main focus is to encourage good behavior rather than act on bad behavior. With all that said, Blackview dash cams are the clear pick for this use case because of their unique Blackview cloud. While it's not uncommon for dash cams to have app connectivity, they usually work by broadcasting their own Wi-Fi network, which you could directly connect to on your phone and then open up their respective apps. I found this method to be of questionable usefulness since it was almost always faster to just eject the SD card when I needed to access my footage. And in my case, it was especially annoying since if your car has wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, your phone will automatically disconnect from the dash cam to reconnect to your car's infotainment system. And so the only way I could use the app was to disable Apple CarPlay. The Blackview Cloud, on the other hand, works by connecting to your home or business's Wi-Fi network. When the Blackview cameras are hardwired or connected to the Blackview battery, they connect to the internet and are accessible through the Blackview app. In the app, you can view events, normal recording, or even live view using the free version. And if you pay for the monthly subscription, you can additionally see a GPS record of the car's position throughout the day. If you want to go even further than that, you can buy a Blackview LTE module to be able to get real-time video and event push notifications from the Blackview Cloud. The app is highly configurable as to what would constitute an event, but you can choose from things like impact detection, over speed, hard braking, hard acceleration, and even hard cornering. I specifically tested the Blackview DR900X, which is available in packages with a rear camera or with an interior camera that has infrared night vision, but depending on your needs, Blackview also makes a complete driver monitoring system called the DX750 that can even record and notify on drowsy and distracted driving using AI video analysis. The last use case for a dash cam is for people who have a car or truck with limited visibility, spend a lot of time towing trailers, or have older cars that don't have a backup camera. For this use case, a rear view mirror dash cam is a simple, quick, and surprisingly affordable way to significantly increase rear visibility with the added bonus of front and rear recording. I regularly tow a boat and I don't like that I can't see what's happening inside the boat with my rear view mirror or built-in backup camera but by mounting my dash cam's rear camera high enough, I can see potential issues that occur at highway speeds, like cushions lifting or unsecured items blowing around inside the boat. In this category, my recommendation is the $89 Volwe 10-inch mirror camera. The video quality won't compete with other cameras like the Viofo A129, but it does still give a good idea of what's happening, and the real value is the crystal clear rear video and high quality 10-inch touch display. You can also turn the monitor off and use the mirror camera as a traditional mirror, but it won't be the same quality as a non-video screen mirror. Mirrored touchscreens are also unfortunately fingerprint magnets, so it's nice that the Volway also includes locally processed voice commands that are convenient and surprisingly fast. Show front camera. Okay. Show rear camera. Okay. Turn off screen. Okay. Turn on screen. In this category, I also tested the Rexing M3, Nexigo D90, and GKU G800, but I found that the Volwe gave the best performance versus price, and I also preferred a smaller mirror since I found that the larger and heavier screens vibrated more while driving, and I found that pretty distracting. My second pick in this category is the GKU 800, since unlike the other three options, the GKU doesn't have a camera built into the mirror, which allows it to fit exactly over your car's existing mirror and gives a little more flexibility in camera mounting locations. So those are my recommendations and justifications, and if you want to see some more sample video from a specific dash cam, then check out the description for the links for unlisted videos for each camera. If you've seen enough and this video was helpful for you to decide on a dash cam, I would appreciate it if you would use the links down in the description, since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission at no cost to you. But this video is far from over, so next let's talk about dash cam accessories. As I mentioned, arguably the most important aspect of a dash cam is reliability because when you need to access your footage from it, it better be there. The best thing that you can do to ensure reliability is to buy a high endurance SD card, and in my experience, SanDisk makes the best ones, though I have heard good things about the Samsung Pro Endurance line as well. 
Dashcam file size does vary significantly, but for high quality footage, you should expect around 200 megabytes per minute of footage for the front camera and 100 megabytes per minute for the rear and interior cameras. That means that a 64 gigabyte SD card will hold roughly three and a half hours of two channel recording or two and a half hours of three channel recording. Basically, every dash cam supports loop recording, which means you don't really need to worry about monitoring the space on your SD card. It will just delete the oldest files first once it fills up. The price of these cards depends largely on their capacity, but the capacity isn't particularly important since you can also protect files from being deleted manually by pressing the protect or save button on the dash cam. And in most cameras, you can set it to automatically protect events like hard braking, hard acceleration, or impact sensing. And those protected files won't be automatically overwritten by the loop recording. But do keep in mind that if you're protecting a lot of clips, your free space for loop recording goes down. The second most important accessory and choice you need to make is deciding how you're going to power your dash cam. Almost every dash cam is going to come with an accessory plug adapter, which in most cars will power on and off with the car's ignition. If you want to use your camera's parking mode, however, you're going to need to supply it with power even when the car is off, and there are two ways to accomplish that. The first and most common is to hardwire your camera into your car's fuse panel. Some cameras come with a hardwire kit, while for others it's an optional accessory. And usually those kits come with a set of fuse splitters and a little box that detects when your car's battery is getting too low and it cuts off power to the dash cam. The process of hardwiring isn't particularly difficult, but it will be slightly different for each car, and I understand it could be a little overwhelming for some people. For those people, a second option exists to buy a dash cam battery. These batteries work by recharging themselves with your car's accessory outlet whenever the car is on, and then they provide power to your dash cam when the car is off. Normally, you can fit these batteries into your glove compartment and make the wiring look nice enough with just the included pry bar without needing to remove any of your car's interior trim pieces. But the drawback is that they only work if you drive at least an hour a day. Otherwise, you don't have enough recharge time to top off the battery. The last accessory is a very inexpensive way to provide a significant improvement to video quality, the circular polarizing filter. An unavoidable downside of recording through your windshield glass is interior reflections of your dashboard like you can see here on this footage from the Viofo A129. Installing a circular polarizing filter can reduce or eliminate these reflections completely. Just place it over the camera lens and check the footage, and if needed you can rotate the polarizing lens until the reflections are gone. A polarizing filter can sometimes cause a sunburst effect in direct sunlight, but for me the overall increase in video quality is well worth it. Again, links to all those accessories are down in the description. Next, let's talk about the legality of dash cams. Depending on where you live, there might be some different laws that may or may not apply to your dash cam. First, most states and countries recognize your right to record anything that happens in a public place with no expectation of privacy, as long as the recordings are used for personal use only. However, if you start posting or sharing dash cam footage, it may be illegal based on your local laws. Second, recording audio is generally covered by an older set of laws regulating wiretapping and eavesdropping, and there isn't much case law about how it relates to dash cams. In the US, these regulations vary by state, but require either one party or all party consent to recordings, meaning an Uber driver in Nebraska doesn't need to notify passengers that their conversations are being recorded, but in an all-party state like Florida, every passenger needs to be aware of the microphone prior to any recordings. However, these laws are a little bit muddy because they do allow for recording of conversations that happen in a public place where they may be reasonably overheard, but whether that applies to the back of an Uber or a taxi has yet to be defined by case law. The third and most confusing law that you may be breaking is that some states and countries prohibit you from attaching any non-transparent object to your windshield that could reduce driver visibility. This not only includes dash cams, but also GPS units, phone holders, and window stickers for parking garages, security gates, and rideshare services. However, no one seems to pay attention to this law, and in Florida we have a law that expressly prohibits attaching things to your windshield. However, if you go to the Florida SunPass website, which is owned and operated by the Florida Department of Transportation, they specifically instruct you to attach your SunPass toll road transponder to your windshield in a location that would be against the law. The point is that there may be laws pertaining to dash cams based on your specific location, but in my googling I couldn't find a single record of a person being arrested or even ticketed for having a dash cam, while I found hundreds of news stories about people who were able to prove they were wrongly ticketed or arrested by using footage from their dash cam. But keep in mind that I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice, so you are ultimately going to need to decide what to do with that information. If you've got any other questions about these specific models or dash cams in general, go ahead and leave a comment and I will do my best to get your question answered as fast as possible. 
Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.